Today I'm going to show you how to make cream soda. It's been popular since the late 1800s and it's still around today obviously. Most people know it as a vanilla soda, just the base flavor, but in reality it's vanilla with a hit parade of other flavors and used in smaller amounts that really bring out that classic cream soda flavor that most people know. Now I don't drink a lot of cream soda anymore, not like I did when I was a kid. But there is a connection between cream soda and an old fashioned cocktail that I'm gonna show you in the second half of this video that I personally think is brilliant. So stick around for that because we're gonna use this flavoring like we use bitters in an old fashioned. And I'm gonna show you the connection there because it's really important. But also if you just wanna make cream soda, the soda, this will make 400 liters of cream soda with 100 mils of flavoring for you know a few dollars. So let's just get to it because it's one of the easier sodas to make. It doesn't require any special equipment or techniques, just the ingredients. So I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of Drink. And as I mentioned, cream soda is a vanilla based soda, but it has highlight flavors that are important to bring out that kind of flavor. And this recipe goes back at least 100 years. This recipe specifically comes from the source book of flavors. It was an old textbook. I don't think it's published anymore. You'd have to go to a library to check it out. That's where I checked this one out. It's pretty good. It's kind of that classic cream soda flavor. And that's probably, this recipe is probably what most cream soda manufacturers base theirs on and then make subtle modifications. But what you really need to start is your base flavor, which is vanillin. Now you can't use vanilla extract. It's not concentrated enough for this. So you'll need to get vanillin powder. It's cheap. You know, you can get it on Amazon or wherever. If you need a supplier list, I have that over on my Patreon page. But vanillin is the key flavor. Now I also mix in a little ethyl vanillin because it has it's perceived to be a better flavor and it's much more concentrated or has a stronger vanilla flavor. When you use the two together, it kind of gives out a more rounded vanilla flavor. So this is the easy part. We just got to get this into the beaker and I've pre-weighed everything so that um, it's easier. Next, we're going to add propylene glycol. You can use ethanol if you want. Uh, that's what this original recipe called for. But I looked at all the chemistry and everything seems to dissolve in propylene glycol. So this could be a completely non-alcoholic formula. I just preheat my propylene glycol. Helps dissolve things quicker. You do need to be fairly accurate when you're measuring this out. So I'm not going to fill this up to the 100 mil mark because we still have to add ingredients. So I generally fill it up to the 70 millish mark. There is a magnetic stirrer in there, so you have to account for that afterwards. Usually what I do is either take a graduated cylinder, so one of these, or a volumetric flask and add it. But in reality, if you have an accurate beaker, you can get these at the grocery store. You fill it right up to the 100 mil line, as long as you remove that magnetic stirrer in there. And you can make this without the magnetic stirrer, you just have to stir it with your hand, fair amount, or put it in a bottle and shake. But basically, I will add enough of that to get started. Then then just turn on the stir and get it going. So once you get this started, that's your base flavor. Now we have to add our highlight flavors. It's almost like perfume making. But this is ethyl acetate. It is an ester and it's found in fruits. It's found naturally. It's found in almost every single distilled or fermented beverage. So it's very common in distilled spirits, wines, beers. It has a fruity flavor, hard to, but more ethereal. It kind of gives those highlight fruit flavors. So we need to add two and a half mils of this. Now my, So these dropper bottles, they actually have a scale on them that helps me measure it, so it's just not random. If you don't have dropper bottles like this, you can just use disposables, and I will be using the disposable ones for this. So that's ethyl acetate. That's just gonna give it a fruitier element. The next one is isyl amyl acetate. Again, another one you'll find in a lot of fermented beverages, especially malt beverages like scotch malts and beer. It's known as kind of a banana flavor. So if you've, if you've ever eaten those artificial bananas, those little yellow candies as a kid, that's this flavor. And we're only gonna use it in a small amount, so 0.6 milliliters. 
And that's going to give, again, more of a fruit element. Uh, in dilution, in concentration, it does have a banana aroma. But as you dilute it out and mix it with other compounds, it kind of has a, an element of pear, banana, sometimes apple. But it's got basically a fruit aroma. So 0.6 mils of this. And again, you don't have to be super accurate with this. I mean, if you're off by you know, a tenth of a mil, it's not going to make a very big difference. But if you're producing this for commercially, you wanna make a cream soda, definitely when you get into bigger volumes, be more accurate. The next is lemon oil. Typically you'd use terpeneless oils. Terpenes will not dissolve in oil like limonene. And that's an example of a terpene. They will dissolve a little bit in propylene glycol but in very sparing amounts. So the reality is you, we just need a mill of this. And once you dilute this out to that 400 liter mark, like I talked about, it will be soluble. So uh, we're just gonna add one mill of this. So one mill of that. And so in the original formula, they called for four mils roughly, but I'm adding citral in this case. Citral is soluble in propylene glycol, not glycerin. If you need to know the difference, propylene glycol and glycerin, I've done a video on it. And if you need to know any of the techniques about making soda, I've got basically a playlist called Making Soda from Scratch, and it will show you everything you need to know. So now with this, with citral, it's kind of that, definitely a citrus aroma. It's soluble in propylene glycol at this level. So we're going to need half a mil of this. And it's got a fairly strong flavor, so you want to be fairly accurate with that. So as you can see, we've got kind of a banana fruity flavor. We've also got this, or kind of an ester quality from these. We've got the citrus quality from this. Next, we're looking at, this is strawberry aldehyde or aldehyde C16. It's, they do describe it as strawberry, but it's actually more of a red fruit flavor with a kind of leans towards strawberry. But we're gonna add one mil of this. And it is kind of viscous, so I have to add it half mil amounts here. Now that is, kind of the red fruit quality. So the next three, the other next two, the aldehyde C16 and the next two ingredients is why this is actually red. So the next one is benzaldehyde. Most people know benzaldehyde as a cherry slash almond flavor. If you've ever had Dr. Pepper, you're looking at this or cherry Coke. Those, this is that kind of cherry quality, maraschino, maraschino cherries, you know, that's what this is. Now we just, this is fairly, concentrated and has a really strong aroma. So I'm only gonna add six drops of this. And it smells pretty much like almond extract. The one thing about extracts at like the grocery store is that you don't know what concentration is in them, whereas these I do. So this is 50% benzaldehyde and propylene glycol, I believe. So it allows me to kind of know accurately what I'm putting into this. But if you just wanted to do this from grocery store ingredients, you could get the isoamyl acetate, the banana oil. You could get your lemon oil or your lemon extract, and you could get your uh, almond extract and add that to the vanilla. And you'd be getting pretty close. So the last ingredient is beta ionone. And you may have noticed if you've watched my uh, video on how to make an energy drink, a number of these ingredients went into the energy drink as well. So it's a little bit duplicative. And yeah, so uh, beta ionone is an extract from rose oil. So uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, there's kind of a period of time where people like to put rose and stuff, but beta ionone is a component of that. And it has a very red fruit aroma. It actually smells really good. But again, why this is red sometimes is these three ingredients create that kind of red fruity flavor that's associated with the vanilla. And this use, is used in such small amounts that we're literally going to use two drops. 
And if you want the full formulation, again, I have all that. I have, when I do these, I do a worksheet. So if you're actually interested in making these things, just sign up to Patreon, it's five bucks. Help support the channel. I give you all the, where to find the ingredients, all the ingredients, uh, basically a procedure how to make this. So everything's in order uh, because when you're making this stuff, though there is wiggle room to the left and right, often you wanna be fairly accurate and you need to know your parts per million flavoring. And I also provide all the calculations for you so you know how to use this. But this one's simple enough. I'm just gonna bring this up to the 100 mil mark and then I will finish it off once I take the magnetic stir out. But we will let that dissolve, but that is basically your cream soda flavor. And once this is fully dissolved, you can just store it in a bottle. Again, you use this. And then you will take one liter, this is actually half a liter, but if you were to take one liter of simple syrup, you'd take a pipette and you'd add two mils of this into a liter of syrup and you would actually have your cream soda syrup. That's how easy it is. The cooler part for me is that we're going to use this to flavor an old fashioned cocktail. We're gonna use one to two drops of this in an old fashioned cocktail. And if you've noticed anything, and I'll explain it, there's a little foreshadowing here, but all of these components can be found in the old fashioned cocktail. And I'll explain once we go to the bar. So I'm just gonna let this dissolve. Once you're at the 100 mil mark, it's ready to go. Two mils of it in a liter of soda or a liter of uh, simple syrup. You can make one to one or three to two, whatever ratio you want. Put that in, then you're gonna measure out one ounce of the syrup, put it in a glass. You do need a little acid. I use acid phosphate. You can use citric acid. If you're to put citric acid into the bottle, you're gonna use about three grams per liter. So again, all of this is on the worksheet that I have on my Patreon stuff. So if you're really serious about actually making this, that is probably something you should get. But if you're just curious how to make it and what goes in it, there, that's pretty much it. Now stick around for the old fashioned part because it's really, it's, I think it's brilliant personally. So let's go do that. We'll just let this dissolve and we'll head over to the bar. So let me show you the connection between an old fashioned cocktail and cream soda. And we'll start over here by the whiskeys. These two esters, ethyl acetate and isoamyl acetate are probably two of the most common esters you're going to find in any fermented or distilled spirit. So when we add them via the cream soda flavoring, we're just basically amplifying what's already there. So uh, these are pretty common. If you ever look up any whiskey tasting notes and you wanna know the chemicals, these two are usually right up front. So then we have our vanilla note and vanilla is obviously very important in cream soda, but it's also very important in aged spirits. So whether you're using American oak and you get bourbons and you get that really big vanilla note or you're using Canadian whiskey and used casks or even brandy or rum, they all have a vanilla note and that comes from the oak. And so obviously that plays an important part of why we like old fashions. Next, we have our citrus, lemon and citral. They're very common in lemon and orange. So this is actually a lemon. It's a Meyer lemon, they're in season now. But this lemon peel matches this lemon in the cream soda formulation. So again, this is just going to amplify what's already in the old fashioned cocktail. And finally, we have our red fruits and our benzaldehyde. And these are maraschino cherries. It's February in Canada, finding fresh cherries, pretty hard right now. And don't have any Luxardo cherries or brandy soaked cherries. So these will have to do. Though they're not as bad as you think they are. If they were invented today, they'd be the molecular mixology wonderkin of, you know, in the last decade. But they do have that benzaldehyde flavor, that cherry almond flavor that we talked about in Dr. Pepper and Cherry Coke. Uh, so you're already going to find that flavor in your old fashioned. So, and then obviously we have bitters, which doesn't have an equivalent in there, but it can, if you're using orange bitters, you'd obviously match with the orange here. But I have Angostura and I actually like Angostura in my old fashioned. So let me show you how to make an old fashioned. Typically I'd use a sugar cube, but for video expediency, I'm going to add a little simple syrup. And then I am going to add my cream soda Basically, it's an extract or an essence. Now, always make sure you clean off the tip because it's quite drippy and you'll get too much in there. The amount you want to use is one to three drops. 
and it's just a hint of this cream soda flavor. It's actually going to blend in fairly well, but it's like somebody walking down a street wearing with some perfume or cologne and you just get a subtle whiff of it. That's all this does. Uh, there's no sweetness to be added from this extract or essence. So you're just going to get a hint of that cream soda flavor and it may play with your mind and give you a few memories. And next we're gonna add a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. I usually go two or three. And then we're going to add our bourbon. And uh, I always use 100 proof or above, 50% uh, ABV. Or I use 100 proof and above just because I find it uh, works better for me. But you can use anything you want, including brandy, if that is your thing. Now I just give this a stir. And then we'll add a few ice cubes to the mix. If you want, you can use ice blocks. I use a standard old fashioned glass, not like a double rocks glass. I find these are too big. Uh, they give the impression of generosity, but I know I'm getting two ounces of bourbon into my drink. So short drink or a short glass works for me, honestly. I'd, Again, this idea of faux generosity because the glass is bigger and the ice cube is bigger, but you're still getting the same drink. Uh, doesn't really appeal to me. But now we're going to add our lemon peel. You can use orange if you want. I don't express it too much, just a little bit. Uh, I don't want too much orange in my old fashioned because it turns it kind of into Grand Marnier. Uh, you just get this orange note that's a little too intense. I really want to taste the bourbon. And then finally, we're going to add our maraschino cherry, and that is the old fashioned. You can give it a stir if you want, but uh, it tends to come together pretty well at this point. So I would be happy to receive this drink. And when you taste it, you do just get a hint of it because again, as I've explained, most of this stuff's already in there, but it does amplify it just a bit. And it does make for a, I guess, a memory that's pulled out of this, that cream soda is a kid memory. It's and not it's in your face, hint. it's not excessive. So it really does work in this and I quite enjoy it. And I think this is one of the better ways to make an old fashioned. It's a simple drink, it should be simple, but it, it can be experimented with. And if you get a chance, do try to make this and try this. I think people will be quite happy. And I think you can make upwards of a thousand or two thousand drinks with one hundred mil bottle of this essence because you're only using one to two drops. So uh, this will last quite a long time. And if you need to make cream soda, you can using the same thing. So that's the cream soda old fashioned. It's a curiosity and something I think is pretty cool. So make it. If you do make it, let me know how it works out in the comments. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.